1997, they were really upset. It cost them $3,000 to give off the sin of masturbation. Uh, $3,000 for one masturbation. Yeah, that particular subject is treated as a deep sexual perversion within the church. It's not just frowned upon, it's they come down on it quite hard, like with a hammer. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why, because nothing that Hubbard ever wrote said that it's something to come down on. Maybe you know I'm guilty, cops, judge, and jury, they all agree. But there's a, a bit of a medieval morality uh, at the, in the church about that kind of activity, and it's completely unacceptable. And uh, again, they do consider it their business, and they do consider that you know they have the right to know everything about every single instance of every single time you've ever done anything. And so they'll pull that information, and they'll make you feel guilty about it. And they will definitely charge a person to get off. They're sitting in a confessional session. Mm -hmm. And they need to detail when, for how long, were what any other heard, devices what the used? Right down yeah. to the nitty gritty. That's right. Everything must be told the Mother Church. That's correct. It's the exact time, exact place, the exact form, and the exact event. So it's every single detail about it. My very first job, my very first assignment when I came onto that job was there was a man who was about 40 years old, he was a staff member. His wife had been sent to uh, Florida, she'd been gone for a year or two on training, and he hadn't seen her, and he had admitted that he had masturbated or been masturbating. And how, where did that come up? How, how did that information he, come up? He got in trouble for something and he admitted it, or he was getting a confessional and admitted it, that's how it comes up. And um, so I was 15. And he came to the office, and I had to handle him. So it's like the first day, I think, or the second day I started working on this job, and I had to tell him that he couldn't masturbate. I had to have him read a policy where L. Ron Hubbard says masturbating is bad. And I had to get him to figure out how not to masturbate and... You're 15 years old? Yeah, I'm 15. I was so embarrassed. I didn't even know what I was doing, and I'm telling this 40-year-old man to not masturbate, and it was the most embarrassing thing in the world. No one's allowed to masturbate. Masturbating is a big issue. You get in big trouble. You won't get promoted. No masturbating. You know, even if your wife's gone or, or you're a young kid or anything, no masturbation is allowed. It's really frowned upon. You're considered aberrated. You're considered, like, messed up if you masturbate. And this is in policy by Hubbard? Yeah. In books, too? Yeah, he says... Um, Masturbation is bad because it stimulates sexual pictures. I never really understood what that. People have speculated that the church is inordinately interested in your sex life. Mm -hmm. Any comment on that? Well, I think it's uh, the degree of interest is initially put there as it's something for your own good so that you can relieve yourself of your transgressions. But I've seen it used against a person, including myself, long after that information has, you know, come off, you know, you've unburdened yourself of that information, and it's no longer affecting you. You're no longer doing those things. You're no longer involved in things, past misdeeds, or whatever you might consider, you know, about that activity. But then, it's on file, it's on record, and that information can then be used later on to make you look like a pervert, to make you look like a bad person. It was told in confidence but it's used against you later to make other people think less of you. That definitely happened to me, and I've definitely seen it happen with other people. So really, there's no sanctity of a session? None whatsoever. The confidentiality, the, the folders are stamped with a priest-penitent privilege, but that's for show, because, uh, well, even in Laura Di Crescenzo's case, there were like, what, over 100 people who had had access to her PC folders that mm -hmm. were stamped? confidential, confessional, yeah. it's, it's just not true. What you said in the sanctity of a session will be used against you punitively later. Yes. I know there's a bait and switch con where 
You're not allowed to be punished for what you say in session. Mm -hmm. So for what you say in session is now ordered to HCO set checks. Right. And you can be punished for HCO. So they take out the session data and now they call it not auditing you on right. the cams. Well, here's the way it actually works as I've seen it, which is, you know, when you're in the church and you're a good boy or you're a good girl and you're going along with the program and you're giving money and you're doing your classes, they, they, then that, you're, you're not going to be under threat of that information coming out or coming to light. But if you start thinking for yourself or you start looking at uh, things that are not in agreement with the church or you start talking about things that are not in agreement with the church, that information starts coming out and they start looking through it and start pulling it out and they use it against you or there's a threat of using it against you or in my case they'll just put it out on a piece of paper for everybody to see so that they'll it's it's used in such a way that they, they try to get people to think less of you or worse of you so that they won't listen to you and your disagreements or your problems or your the points that you're making about the church being wrong.